How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave and this is episode 3 of a Let's Play series for Farming Simulator 22 on the mod map New Lands. Where we last left off, we had started to receive some recognition from our contractor by, I'm sorry, by our employer by giving us some contracts uh, for the highway work. Uh, we were able to complete those and they were very, very impressed with that. So the, the fact that you know, we're turning out to be one of the better employees that they've had, you know, in sh just a short amount of time we've been here is just, it's always getting us off on the right foot. So much so that they reached out to us bright and early this morning. You can see it's 6 a.m. in uh, September 1, and they have uh, another contract for us to work on, so we need to get cracking on that. But uh, we actually first need to take kind of inventory of what it is that we have. Now, you can see... We planted grass in the last episode when we got our field all up to snuff. You can see the pH perfect, nitrogen perfect. We're expected to have a yield potential of 123 out of 125. We are missing that 2% because we weren't able to roll. I'm sorry, not able to roll. Weren't able to mulch. There was nothing to mulch to begin with. So that's something we'll pick up later. But it's okay. That's okay. But we need to kind of take inventory of what we have and what we don't have around the farm. We don't have a silo yet. We don't have uh, mowing equipment uh, of our own. We've got uh, a harvester that we don't really need. And that kind of brings me to what this uh, episode is going to start out with. We're going to get rid of this. We don't need a harvester right now. And the money that's being tied up in it would be better served... Uh, elsewhere. So we're going to take this up to the shop and sell it on. And with this we should be able to have just enough money to be able to buy us a our first set of a mowing equipment. Um, not only that but I think we're also going to purchase uh, ooh, at 14 miles an hour. This is going to take a while. Um, we're also going to be able to purchase something that's going to help us with contracts because every single contract I've gotten up to this point with this company has been with round bale work, which is fine. I have no problem with round bales, but the way that they have us transporting it, that every single time they give us a, a contract, it's with the front uh, bale spikes, not spikes, bale tines, whatever they're called. I forget what they're called off the top of my head. But those tines are such a pain to use. Um, so I think we're also, if we have enough money, going to buy us a round bale trailer. Uh, one of the auto load ones. That way we can, you know, kind of expedite how uh, we pick up our bales and uh, whatnot. And I was talking with the owner of uh, the company here. And they were telling me how I could, if I wanted to, I could leave some of the equipment that I use for contracts up there at the shop. Instead of leaving it strewn about the yard and having to come to the yard every single time and whatnot, I can just, you know, leave it up the shop there. And as long as I kind of leave it in that outer perimeter there, he said that it would kind of, you know, boost traffic to the, uh, you know, kick on the lights. It's still a little bit hazy and dark out. Yeah, it is a little hazy and dark. Oof. But, uh, you know, kind of boost traffic in there. Let people know what kind of inventory that they have. Just going to go through this considering we're only going 14 miles an hour. Um, you know, let people know that, hey, there is a business here. They do sell things like the, the yard equipment and, you know, tractors and all that stuff. So anything that we get to use on contracts, um, he said, feel free to leave there. So that's the plan. We're going to, you know, try and purchase that bale trailer and turn around and uh, use it on our contracts. We'll just leave it up there at the shop until we need it for the next contract and so on and so forth. But with... Uh oh, sorry about that. I had a little coughing fit. Um, but with that said, we'll be able to take this uh, be able to take this harvester and go sell it and I think we're gonna purchase a nice new mower um, I haven't decided on which one would pay attention to what I'm doing not at my watch 
Um, I think I'm going to buy a nice new mower. I, I haven't decided which one yet, but... Ooh, you know what? That kind of reminds me. Now we're on a straightaway. Any good sales going? Eh, not really. I might consider one in particular because and it, it's going to be a lot of money. It depends on what we get for, for all this here. But uh, it's it's pretty expensive what I'm thinking about getting. But it can do the job of like five different uh, pieces of equipment. I think it's like technically, let's see, one, two, three. So three pieces of equipment all at once. But we'll see, we'll see if it works out. I'm not 100% certain just yet. It's all going to depend on what we get when we get there. So let's see. Uh, Oh man, this is brutally slow. But, uh, you know, I'm, I won't even leave us in suspense because we're almost there. So, what I'm thinking about getting is a mower. If I, if I get enough money from this, because I don't want to shortchange myself, um, get a mower that not only has the mowing deck built into it, um, but it also has a, uh, tether as like a detachable component. So depending on what kind of contracts I get, I would be able to use said, uh, mower for both silage and, uh, hay contracts, which would be absolutely perfect. I'd be able to just detach from that, uh, component and be you know, be workable for silage, and then when I'm uh, needing to make hay, well, hey, I just connect to that component, and we're good to go. Well, looks like people are getting ready to open up the uh, farmer's market, so that's cool. Oh, I just clobbered that sign. This uh, harvester is just a little wide for the town roads here. I'll have to come back and fix that later. But like I was saying earlier, they did leave us a contract and they put all the equipment here for us to use. As you can see, there it is, but one thing at a time. Alright, let's see what we get here. Oh, 65, almost 66,000 for this. And then almost 22. So you talk almost 80,000 for the two. Oh man, 87,000. So almost 88,000. So that's almost covers the mower. That almost covers the mower itself. So you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll get it. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to get it. I think it's going to be a huge investment. Yeah, look at that. The Agco Swather. It's $100,000 just for the mower. Um, Challenger, Heston, Massey, or Case. I'll go with Challenger. Why not? Uh, Michelin. Let's go Michelin. We'll go with standard. We'll go with Michelin standard. I like that. And now we need the Twin Max conditioner. So this is the razor bar, which is the mowing deck. It's uh, 16 feet wide. It's 4.9 meters wide. Um, and inside it also has the Twin Max conditioner, which is the uh, tether. It's all built in into one unit. So for this, we want Challenger. Yeah, okay. So check this out. We can actually use it for this contract here. Ooh, nice. So we come up. Perfect. So if you look at the top left corner, you see how there's two front components. 
The first one is for the razor bar. The front one there, which we have a tedding contract, so we're going to need it, but just kind of sake of argument, just to sh demonstrate. Oh, we gotta lower the implement. And now, that tether is all crated up, and we just drive forward and roll away if we don't need it. But we do need it this time. So, there we go. We will raise. Now, the one thing I will say is this thing gets a little squirrely if you go too hard on the turns. So... It travels, you know, 19 miles an hour, which is slow, but not horrible. It's certainly not 14 like the uh, Harvester was. I apologize. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm still getting over this uh, sinus infection, which made its way into my chest, so now I'm really hacking coffee, so I'm trying to catch myself from coughing into the microphone, uh, so you might hear some pops from me hitting the mute all the time, so I apologize up front. So, now that we're here at the contract, what we're going to do is come around the sign here gonna fire this up by first lowering it down now fire it up and there we go and now as we drive see we're making a swath while we mow and we're tedding at the same time let's kick on some lights so we can see what we're doing here but how awesome is that? We're swathing, we're tedding, it's saving us, you know, several passes. You figure, we got a mow, then we got a ted, then we got a windrow, then we got, like, it's doing all that for us. We don't need to do anything right now besides mow. It's perfect. It works great. And what's nice about this piece of equipment, as opposed to... The other set of equipment that we've been getting... Oh, I clobbered that sign. I am... Doing real good. Uh, but the other set of equipment there, they have the Vermeer uh, equipment, and they also have the sidestep equipment as well. And the problem is, when we get up to embankments like this, you can see how we have to kind of go in between... Ooh go in between everything oh what the there we go like going between these pillars here and look at that look at that perfect come on come on you can do it Oh, I'm trapped. Come on. There we go. You can see because of the terrain here is so uneven, the cutter bar is having a hard time getting all the various uh, patches and stuff. But it's starting to level out, so that's okay. Ooh.
so it looks like we're done there on field 20 the mowing and the tedding now we need to pick up uh, the baler and uh, actually you know what I'm gonna go ahead and cut us uh, cut it from here and we'll pick it up once we get to the shop and whatnot all right as you can see came back to the shop picked up the baler but I also purchased this this little wind rower right here uh, super super awesome wind rower just attaches to the front of the tractor there and just kind of helps you gather up all the stragglers and whatnot and puts it directly in front of the baler so you're not missing anything but check it out we also bought the uh, round baler tra round bale trailer as well so we're good to go and we also purchased this this is the uh, attacher supporter for the trailer so it just mounts to a three-point link and gives you a little bit extra turning radius which is really nice but let's go ahead and head back to the field and pick up all that uh, all that hay all right we are back here at the field let's go ahead and unfold this so bam just like that and then we can lower this turn it on turn this on and now any stragglers and it's getting thrown right in front and we can pick up several rolls rolls rows at once check it out booyah that way we don't have a runaway bale oh I think I missed a little right back there oh there big boy There we go, I think. What is going on here? Sorry, yeah, it's... Some reason it's just wanting to jump the... What? Why? Why? Sorry, I've not had this issue before with this wind rower. Now, now I think we're under control. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop off our windrower. Now that, we'll pick up our trailer. And now we'll head back out to the field, pick up those bales. Hurry up and get in front of Grandma before we take forever. Okay. Go ahead and lower this down. Let's start picking up bales. You know, I'll come back the other way. Check it out, 14 bales. Perfect. And now we will head back to, I believe it's the animal, de yep, animal dealer, just like the rest of them. All right, I'll head there and deliver these bales, all 14. We'll see you out there.
And there we go. Not too shabby. Look at that. One trip. We're able to pick up everything. You figure we had, what, 14 bales? Which means that if we were to use those uh, holders that the shop has, that would have taken, what, 4, 8, 12, at least 4 separate trips. And you can see, I mean, it's not like this place is just a hop, skip, and jump away. I mean, it's a pretty decent distance away. So, this, this uh, in my opinion, this trailer just paid for itself right there. Even if it didn't <laughs> actually pay for itself. But I'm okay with that. Alright, so we are going to head back to the shop. We're going to drop off the trailer, collect on the contract. And then uh, from there, who knows? We'll see, uh, we'll see what comes up. Alright, up here at the shop, go inside and collect on the contract. All right, seventy-six hundred bucks, not bad. Plus the money we made on the bales, I'm happy with that. Figure we look at our finances. I mean, yeah, we spent a lot of money, but bales sold two thousand eight hundred and sixty-one dollars, and contract income seven thousand six hundred. I can, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. Oh, I'm getting flagged down inside. Let me go inside and see what they need. Okay, so I just spoke with the boss, and he's telling me that we just received a phone call from a lady named Amelia Lambert. And what Amelia is informing us is that there are, uh, she owns a barn that's uh, just beside her home. And the barn is just littered with trash, and she needs somebody to come out and take out the trash. So we told her that we would certainly accept her uh, that we would offer our services and accept her you know contract and I'm gonna head out there I'm gonna go and grab my trailer and my tractor from the farm and we're gonna head out there and work on our uh, work on our yard so we got a little bit of walking to do so we will uh, see you there shortly all right we are here at the farm we're gonna pick up our trailer and our tractor There's the tractor. Okay. Now, as you can see, at uh, some point in our last episode, we were having a whole lot of recording issues. I don't know what was going on. It seems to have worked itself out, but one of the things we ended up doing last episode was switching out this trailer. Uh, switching our old trailer just wasn't working for everything that we needed it for and this one seemed to kind of work a little bit better so we're gonna go ahead and pick up our weight just to make sure we're good and balanced and now we're gonna head out to uh, Amelia's house let's go ahead and jet out there I'll cut us back in when we get there I believe this is the barn in question because let's see yeah that's the address she gave us for the home so this must be the building here so let's back up Oh yeah, you can look inside and see all the trash and stuff, so let's go ahead and start picking this up and we'll get it down to the recycling center. Busy people, uh, or busy pedestrian area this morning. Let's 
see. Why is this lady? Let's talk to this lady and see what she needs. Okay, so... She saw me starting to take all this stuff from here. Across the street, there is a bunch of barrels as well, so they asked if I could take those as well. So, go ahead and take those, and, you know, just more stuff to take to the recycling center. like two more barrels over here plus whatever's across the street okay let's go through and just Make sure there's no trash strewn about outside the barn. Okay. Yep. Looks like we're good. Let's go ahead and pack this up and... And then... Right across the street. Oh yeah, look at that. Bunch of barrels and pallets. They weren't kidding. Let's see. Oh, they must have... Oh, she was saying there might be some around back, and she said that uh, somebody might move them up to the front. Looks like they already did, so... Let's go ahead and load these up, and should be good to go. Okay, I think I think those are right, okay. Let's see how they do. I might have to adjust our trailer because we've got uh, adaptable sides on this trailer that we can just attach to it and extend it out we might have to add those extensions just because I mean you look at this 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 whole this whole thing is loaded with barrels and we could have taken more so might be just something bite the bullet and just go ahead and purchase it Kind of what I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll see.
so far there's been a few moments where you can see the load just kind of jostling around and kind of settling into place but so far it's riding all right it's, you know where I'm gonna be nervous is going across the train tracks up here um, well, it looks like the market's starting to open up that's cool Slow right down. Perfect. Go on up. Look at the yard all nice and clean, like that, like that a lot. Slow down. There we go. Perfect. And we're almost up to the recycling center, so be able to dump off all these barrels. Now my hopes is this new trailer will whoa, what just happened there? This new trailer will be able to get up and down this ramp a lot easier. Won't have as many issues we had with our last trailer. Oh yeah, easy peasy. Okay. one barrel and hiya oh Yeah. Oh. All right. Quite a few barrels in there. Let's go ahead and lower that back down. I just want to see something real quick. Thirty thousand. Two hundred bucks. Not bad, not bad. Let's go get the rest of the stuff. Actually, first we're gonna go and alter this trailer. Yeah, see, look at that. This thing, so much better now that. It, uh, doesn't have those uh, hydraulic pumps, those crank pumps, to set the trailer down those were getting caught on the uh, lip of the ramp when we would when we come in and out Here real quick.
All right, we've got this all set up. Okay. That should ride pretty nice. Whoa, don't do that. All right, well, now we're going to boogie back to the recycling yard and will you stop doing that you know what there i trick you the thing i'm worried about is that if i lose something i'm not gonna see it oh well not much we can do about it at this point so i think what i'll do is i'll hop on top of the trailer and toss out the two big tires just right off the get and then I can hop in the tractor itself and then dump everything out after. I think that'll work out the best. Because then I'm not having to worry about, you know, trying to dump the whole tractor trailer. And then something happens where the tires get stuck or whatever the case may be. Because the way that this door opens, it opens from the bottom up and it swings out towards the top here you know what let's straighten this thing out there we go perfect Okay. Now let's go ahead and hop up here. Up. Out. There's one tire. And there's two tires. We'll go ahead and sell those. Wait. Second one didn't get in there. There we go. Now dump the rest. Okay, I don't know what happened to that pallet right there that's on the trailer bed. Just whoa. Whoops. There we go. Well, you figure between uh, both runs, we made almost four grand. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, now uh, you figure in this episode alone, we bought one piece of equipment that acts like three you figure it acts as a cutter a mower uh, a tether and wind rower but can also be decoupled from the tether, tether and used for silage so you figure those three pieces of equipment are good to go we still need to talk about a baler and uh, a wrapper. But you know what we could do? Hmm. What we could do? Why couldn't we do something like this? For $100,000, this uh, pottinger where 
it wraps for us. Don't want it in there. Or the fast bail for a hundred and ten thousand. Shoot, why couldn't we do that? This is for like a forage harvester. That wouldn't work. So you figure for 110,000 we could get a fast baler. Then we'd have all the equipment we need to do contracts on our own. Do contracts and to work on our yard. We could keep everything up at the at the store. Oh, the... Is that the only... Oh, no, because we could keep our tractor up at the store, too. Why can't... We, why couldn't we do that? Because the tractor... I only need it... When our field comes due. I'd leave a little over 12,000 but then we'd have everything we need literally everything to do every single type of contract how much power does that require. Let's see. So, 100 horses, 150 horses, 150, okay. What kind of, what kind of equipment do they normally give us? Figure it's either M6 or M7 Kubota is the equivalent. At least that's what I recognize. Almost looks like this. Ooh, so it might not be strong enough to use a fast bailer. Or actually, it might be this. No, it's definitely not. They can't be giving us the M8. Could they? Oh, this does look like the M8. Which, if they're giving us an M8, that is more than strong enough to do a fast bailer. I think they offered the Veltra Q series was the other one that they had. 230. But wait, what am I saying? Because I just have my tractor. 718. What? How much horsepower does a 718 have? Oh, more than enough. Well, shoot, yeah, if I keep my tractor up here, I can eventually save up for another tractor, specifically as a yard tractor. Oh, man, why don't I, why don't I do that? And really, I probably got a, a, a little wiggle room to upgrade this tractor in horsepower. 
Oh yeah, that's what we're doing. We're gonna take this tractor back to the yard. Or we're gonna take the trailer back and we're gonna bring the tractor back up and we're gonna buy us a, a baler. Alright, there we go. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do, and I think that's how we're gonna end up this end end out this episode. Is uh go ahead and purchase us a baler. So I'll cut us out here, drop this off the yard, come back and we'll buy us a baler. Then we'll have all the equipment we need. You know what? I'm done waiting for you. Then we'll have all the equipment we need to be able to uh do all the contract work. That's great. That's that'll work out perfectly. Alright, got that back of the yard. And now now we need to drop our tractor off because we're going to start using that from now on. No sense in using their equipment and them docking us pay in order to, you know, just to use their stuff. And it's a much better central location to the jobs and whatnot. And whenever we need to use it at our field, which is going to be every, you know, every couple of months or so, except for the winter we just go to the shop and bring it down it work it works great heck that's is this is awesome i'm really happy about this and i should have stopped there but i didn't for some silly reason I'm probably just too excited hopefully the cops don't pull me over the german please shock for only it's 8 30 in the morning and just seems really dark seems weird Kubota orange. <laughs> now nah, we'll just go with standard white. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And I was doing standard size bales anyways, so it's not like, you know, not having the range of choice is that big a deal. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Look at that. Turn that off.
Look at that. Got a fast baler. We got our mower, windrower, and bale trailer. We have everything needed. Yeah, we have everything needed to be able to do our contracts and to do work on the farm. This is perfect. Let's go ahead and move this right over here. Yeah. I like this. I like this a lot. This will work just fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, following, doing all the things that the algorithms enjoy you doing to show us that you're enjoying the content and engage with this channel. That being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.